Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Fatima Ahmed Qureshi and I'm a fourth year MBBS student. This week with Embrace Series, we are here with Dr. Nafisa Fatima of Pioneer Bat. She is Sheikh Zayed Hospital's first certified female surgeon. So welcome Dr. Nafisa Fatima. Thank you. And so this is Embrace Series in which we juniors are asking for guidance from our accomplished seniors and listening to their life stories. And in this video, we are going to be answering some of the questions that you all posted in SKZ Guidance Forum. So let's get started with the first question. First question is, after finishing our house job, what career choices do we have besides lab, USMLE, induction as postgraduate trainee and getting posted as an M? Okay, there are a lot of opportunities once you have graduated. So you can go for um, masters in uh, clinical subjects and basic subjects like um, MPhil in anatomy, in biochemistry, in physiology, pharmacology, microbiology, you name it. You can go for uh, masters programs here as well as abroad in states as well as in the UK. And you can also go for Masters in Public Health, which is an excellent program and which is uh, which opens up a lot of opportunities for you to work with WHO. And that is a very good path, I would say. And also you can go for uh, research fellowships too. But that, you know, these have those or every program has a certain requirement and you have to explore a certain program that you want to get enrolled into. So the next question is, what advantages and disadvantages do we have as residents of Punjab graduating from a federally governed hospital? That's a difficult question for me to answer because um, when we graduated, Sheikh Zayed was considered a part of a Punjab government. There are certain marks that are dedicated in a central induction program for uh, government graduates. So I, uh, I got the marks for that. Almost all of my friends got the marks for that. So I'm not really sure. I think I need to look up into the program rules for that. There is, a, however, there is a Punjab residency program manual available on the website. And it almost all the rules written out very clearly. So, you know, you can just go there and read the booklet. Next question is regarding FCPS exam, when and how many times it is held and can you take it during your house job? Uh, during your house job, no, because um, the, the house job has to be complete to call to be eligible for this uh, FCPS exam. It is uh, scheduled almost two times and uh, twice a year. So I think uh, some February, March and the other is September, August, September. What is the difficulty level, how much time it requires to pass it, and what subjects are heavily asked in FCPS exam? Okay, so depending upon the specialty that you're opting for, if you're going for FCPS medicine, surgery, gynecology, anesthesia, depend, depending upon the rele relevant fields, um, it is an easy exam. It's not a very difficult exam. It takes around dedicated two to three months of preparation and you're good to go. So um, most of the... Uh, Subjects which are asked are if you are appearing in medicine, you would be tested on physiology aspect more compared to the anatomy and comes to basic basics, but pathology would be there almost in, the, in every exam because that is an integral part of medicine. When you go for FCPS surgery, there is more, there are more questions related to anatomy. You will be tested more in an anatomy part compared to the pathology part, sorry, physiology part, but pathology would be there. So it varies. So if you're going for gynecology, there will be a lot of questions on anatomy of the pelvis and the gyne uro and gyne uro gynecological anatomy, things like that, right? Okay, so FCPS1 is just an entrance exam. So you're tested like um, a final year student in an FCPS exam. Okay, so FCPS part one is an easy exam. So you can just uh, pass it with in a two months preparation, maximum three months. If you have studied well in your med school, you can pass it in a month too, trust me. So there are certain um, revision books like BRS Physiology, First Aid Duke for USMLE Step 1, and um, Reviews, High Yield Anatomy, 
if you are if you are going appearing in surgery then you have to study anatomy in a little bit of more detail snell's review anatomy not the big one the patli wali snell's review and um, all the past papers past papers are the most important part of the examination because you only then you get to know what exactly is asked and what uh, exactly do you are you required to know it's um, uh, it comprises of two papers and uh, it is one hour each you get one hour each it is on, an online exam which is uh, uh, which happens on a laptop you are provided with a laptop and you can answer a choice once you have answered it answered it you cannot change it but you can skip a question once and then uh, revisit the question once only and you cannot revisit it again so time management is usually not a not a problem in fcps exam you have an ample time uh, there are 100 questions in one paper so you have 200 questions in two papers and there is more than enough time for that the marks are out of 200 as well marks uh, are i am not really sure the marking process because they have they have never um they've never declared the the result they just it is always declared as a pass or a fail exam when it comes to part 2 you are uh, tested all together at a different level because you know uh, once you are a certified physician a surgeon once you know you you can practice independently so there is all to it's all together a different criteria of part 2 examination because you are tested not only on the knowledge aspect you are all, tested on the skills aspect as well as uh, on the diagnosis and management aspect of the patient so it's 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 more of a clinical or exam compared to the theoretical exam of part 1 ha huh. okay so two years into your training you have to appear in an intermediate module exam which is also a centered examination conducted by cpsp it is uh, it comprises of a written exam which is also an mcq exam and it helps it is uh, held on the similar protocol as the part 1 exam and then that is followed by if you pass that then that is followed by tocs which is task oriented assessment of clinical skills which also has a timed exam and there are 15 stations or 12 stations at times and uh, certain you are required to perform a certain skill that you have learned in your residency certain diagnosis interpret a certain uh, radiological investigation and or perform a certain ex- clinical examination and that's it then then is part 2 examination which is the big thing which is um, also it has a theoretical component which is the same as an mcq exam but it is it has a slightly more difficulty level compared to the intermediate module which is once you have qualified the written examination you qualify for uh, tocs which is again a stationed examination for um, um, and also timed too and then that is followed by four short cases and one long case for uh, major specialties part 2 is an mcq based exam but now they are converting uh, the exams and the theoretical exam into an mcq exam for almost all the specialties but there are certain specialties when who have theoretical exam like short essay questions types for someone who has passed fcps how easy is to pass lab and vice versa um lab is a different exam fcps is a different exam <laughs> so um because uh, both are uh, conducted by different bodies so the 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 examination rules and all those uh, the total examination process is different and i don't think i think it's not same to relate the two so the next question is that how difficult is it for an skz graduate to get induction in other cip associated punjab institutes especially if you have plans to get into surgical training since our hospital is under federal government which what this advantage it imparts upon us as compared to other public medical colleges graduate uh, i don't think that um, there has to be it would be difficult uh, i don't think so 
but uh, getting into surgery residency is a little easier than getting into a medicine or a gynecological gynecology residency because um, the merit in surgery is high is a little lower because not a lot of people opt for surgery um, but again you have to do bhus and rhcs anyway to get into surgery even things are changing the system is evolving day by day so i cannot say something um, firmly So next question is, what is the induction process in Shehzad? How induction in Shehzad and other federal institutes differs from uh, CIP induction? As SKZ graduates, do we have an advantage over other applicants? And if we plan, if we plan to get training from Shehzad, how easy it is to get us into the system? I think it's very easy for a Shehzad graduate into to get into a Shehzad medical Shehzad hospital training because. Um, Uh, the faculty is very friendly, and they all they have this policy of favoring Sheikh Zayed graduates, which almost all the institutes are um, practicing the same policy. Uh, LMDC in LMDC in Shalamar in FMH, all of them they prefer their own graduates. So uh, um, Sheikh Zayed is a very good place. The only disadvantage is that we have uh, our emergency. That is the only disadvantage that we have a different way of running the emergency. So the, the emergency exposure in both medicine and surgery is less compared to the other hospitals. But the specialty training in surgery in uh, Sheikh Zayed sub specialty training like rheumatology, rheumatology is a second fellowship. Like gastroenterology, even. वो भी अब सोच रहे हैं आई थिंक सेकंड फेलोशिप करने का न्यूरोलॉजी कार्डियोलॉजी देर आर एक्सेलेंट ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स एंड पल्मोनोलॉजी टू शेख जायद बिकॉज सी आई पी इज ऑल्सो इज ऑल द सेंट्रली कंट्रोल्ड कंट्रोल्ड बाय सेक्रेटेरिएट हेल्थ सेक्रेटेरिएट एंड ऑल दैट बट शेख जायद यू कैन से दैट गेटिंग इन इंडक्टेड इन शेख जायद इज एक्चुअली घर की बात है सो यू नो एज सोन एज दो एडमिशन प्रोसेस ओपन फॉर पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट ट्रेनिंग ट्रेनिंग you just apply there they have a different form for that so all together different you don't have to apply via website so and you are interviewed and then you are selected so the next question is can you switch your training pathways after you have been inducted that is leave it in midway go abroad and switch to another specialty you can leave in midway if you want to go abroad but if you want to stay in pakistan if you leave in midway you will be penalized for two years you pick you cannot get inducted into a central induction program for two years duration you cannot apply for that they debar you for two years but if you want to go abroad you can that is not a problem because then you will have you will be following an altogether a different path so what if you want to switch the specialties you cannot you know so choose your specialty as wisely as you choose your spouse okay so the next question is uh what is mo ship and is it easier to get with respect to the training jobs in tertiary care hospitals i think i would i would not be an advocate of mo ship as soon as you get into get into a training program as soon as possible after graduating because this is what that matters mo ship ne aapke kaam nahi aana baad mein right so the only thing that that is going to matter is you will have uh, some i think five marks for bhus and rhc uh, during the ci in the cip program that is all that matters so as soon if you can get into a training program right after graduation and right after your house job just go for it that should be the goal rather than mo ship but because it gets it in some for some programs for some residency programs it is almost mandatory to have an rhc or a bhu experience because then you cannot qualify for induction process so only then you i think only then one can go for that path Like as a medical officer, how rewarding is it to work in BHU and RCs if you get in the first place? You answered that. Ah, huh. it is. Uh, I have. Uh, I Alhamdulillah, मुझे तो नहीं करना पड़ा BHU RC. 
but um, I have heard from my juniors and from a lot of people around me that it gets very difficult to find a BHU at RHC because there are a lot of marks for working there in CIP. That is the only reward that you get, nothing else. Because, um, uh, because there is no structure over there. You are not really supervised in BHU and RHCs. Rather, you are the one right after house job supervising the lower staff, like the paramedical staff. So it's not really rewarding as far as the learning process is concerned, but it's only rewarding as far as the numbers are concerned. That's it. And there is a generalized notion that you cannot get into BHU, RHC, DHQ without a sponge. And that is... <laughs> but it's about your career. Has there been any Sephardic culture so far that you uh, struggled with? Not at all. Alhamdulillah. Um, next question is, how easier is it to get into the Gulf countries and should that be a choice? Is it advantageous? If yes, how do you land there? Yes, that is a very good and very smart move to go to Gulf countries. Uh, for Qatar, you have to um, go for step two CK. Even you can do that without house job. And then once you have, uh, you're done with your step two CK, you can just apply in the program. And a few of Gulf programs, if I'm not wrong, are ACGME accredited, which is American College of Graduate Medical Education. So it gives you a very good advantage. Qatar has um, excellent state of the heart, few excellent state of the heart hospital, uh, art of hospitals like uh, Alhamd Corporation. And, but the only thing is that uh, within five years of graduation, uh, you can apply. After that, you are not eligible. So lastly, is there any general suggestions you would like us to act on as a genius? Mm, always be focused. Focused on what? Focused on your goals. First define mm -hmm. your goals and then just do your best to chase them. And what are the suggestions for the people who want to stay in Pakistan in practice? What are the suggestions to them specified to their FCPS process? Try to get into training program as soon as possible number one. Uh, number two, and try to get through your exam in the first attempt because uh, game part two ke baad shiru hoti hai. I wish all of my juniors the very best of luck. They are our future. They are the future of Sheikh Zayed. And I hope that a lot of Sheikh Zayed students will make Sheikh Zayed proud, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much for your guidance and your time you took out for this interview. I'm pretty sure this will be helpful to so many students who had a lot of questions about FCPS and about uh, practicing in Pakistan. So thank you so much for that. Jazakallah. And I hope that there is a lot of ajar and a lot of success for you ameen, ameen. in the future. Ameen, <laughs> ameen, my pleasure. And um, all of the juniors are always welcome and I'm always there if they need any help, any guidance, even not mm -hmm. only this video, they are always there. Other, they can always approach me on Facebook, on my email and whenever they want to. So, mm -hmm. and I hope if I can be of help for them, I would be available. Best of luck You're with welcome. all of your future things. It was Thank so nice you. talking Thank to you. you.